also are getting in towards the final assembly on this turbo generator. I'll take a look at some of the key features and how we're putting new features on this. So this has to be a system that's designed for steam, a combination of steam and compressed air. And in order to drain off condensing steam from the hot rotor section, you had to put in several drains. These are your water drains up on top. Three of those. And they're draining down through these two sections under the bottom. This is your water drain. You put a pump on your water drain. Over here we've got your oil drain here and your oil charging tube here. And the oil is forced up through the center of the static axle and up into the bearings right up through the center of that for your bearings we've got high speed roller bearings that's your lower bearing which takes most of the, the weight of the rotor we have a spacer designed to lift the hot rotor section up and align it with the, the inlets on your ring, your nozzle inlets. And normally this is designed so your rotor is uh, almost a quarter of an inch, about three sixteenths of an inch underneath the center line of your inlet nozzles so then you can design a spacer. This one's made out of bronze. You can design a spacer to bring the center of your hot rotor up exactly to the center of your inlets, which is where we want it. So your spacer goes down first. Your main bearing goes on top of the spacer. This is the hot rotor section. Fits onto your main bearing down below. And then you have an upper bearing on the top to stabilize your radial forces. This is your permanent magnet array. You've got 12 permanent magnets alternating north, south, north, south. We have these small holes, you can see in between these standoff tubes. These small holes are drilled through to the center of your, your hub and they allow oil which is coming up into your top bearing and dripping down or migrating down to the lower bearing. This allows any excess oil to come out the sides and uh, spray against the, the stator and cool the stator windings. Oh. Your stator, if you look in here, you can see the stator is right in here. You can see the windings on that. The this is a three-phase car alternator stator. So coming out the bottom of the turbine, we have these brass electrical studs coming through the case. And you have pairs for each of three windings. You know, coil one, two, and three with 1A, 1B, 2A, 2B, 3A, 3B. And we brought 
each of the coils out to a separate terminal. So you could wire in the stator any way you want. You can put the windings in series, you can put them in parallel, whatever you want. And that, that'll change the output voltage. So, take the hot rotor, drop that down to seat on the lower bearing like that. We have top bearing, that's your radial bearing. We have an O-ring to use as a, a pressure spring. You want to put a certain pressure on both the bearings, very slight pressure, so the bearings, the, the ball bearings don't rattle around at high speed. They have just a slight amount of pressure to keep them tight. So that goes on over the inner race of the top bearing, and then we have a castle nut. The castle nut down on top of that and you tighten it down until it just slightly compresses the, the O-ring and puts that slight amount of pressure on the bearings. That's the key to running your bearings at high speed is put a slight amount of pressure on so they never have any slop. Okay, your inlet special specially designed inlet for this project we're working on which is out on the east coast. We have two types of nozzles. We have a center nozzle which is a round nozzle and we used a, this is actually a MIG contactor for MIG welding has a very small hole in the end, a 40 thousandths hole drilled to let 35 thousandths MIG wire go through that. And since it had a standard quarter 28 thread, I made up a nozzle to just you know, tap it so we could screw in replaceable nozzles. So you could put in uh, an 023, you could put in an 030, uh, you could put in an 040, 045, which would be 50 thousandths, and then one just slightly above that, which would be 60 thousandths. So it can go like every 10 thousandths, you have various nozzles you can put in for different efficiencies and different, uh, different amounts of power going through your main nozzle. And that's actually lined up there are three slots on your hot rotor, and this one lines up with your center slot. So that's one slot out of three. We have a different type of nozzle on the opposite or 180 degree side of your inlet ring. And this is a slotted nozzle. There's a slot here that this nozzle fits into. And the reason we made a slotted nozzle is so that we could have two holes drilled. So two gas inlets. These are, I believe, 40 thousandths. And these two inlets that you see here line up perfectly with the two outer slots on the hot rotor. So you have your choice when you're powering up this turbine. You can power up just the center nozzle or you can power up the two outer slots with this nozzle or you can turn both of them on for 
three nozzles operating at full power. And you'd want full power when you're spooling up the turbine from, say, zero, cause, because uh, the turbine actually has a forceful clocking going on here. You can see that. That's where your, your super magnets actually pull so hard on the stator uh, iron that it prevents the rotor from turning. And like physics principles say, uh, an object at rest tends to stay at rest. Well, those magnets hold on pretty tight. You can see how tight this is until you get it spinning. And once it begins to spin, it's a whole lot easier to spin it up. Again, the laws of physics pr uh, working for you. So the faster you spin, the easier it is to spin against the magnetic forces. So you want a lot of power when you begin spooling it up. Now, one of the principles of aerodynamics, when you start up an airplane from a dead start, it could take over 300 horsepower to begin moving a small airplane. But once that airplane is moving through the air, it can throttle back from 300 horsepower to 30 horsepower. So these are all just laws of physics you have to work with. Uh, momentum, uh, these are principles of momentum. So to assemble nozzles, I also want to make the nozzles gas tight, so we're putting on these little O-rings. This O-ring fits around the front of the single nozzle. And that O-ring pushes up against a milled shoulder. This is your milled shoulder inside of the the inlet, the inlet block, and when this O-ring pushes up, squashes between the shoulder and the nozzle, it gives us a, a gas tight uh, joint, so none of the gases inside of your turbine can exit out through the nozzle block. And that's important when you're working with ORC or you're recycling your gases, you have to have a gas tight system. So this nozzle also has a little keyway. This keyway milled into it so when it's seated properly this will not spin.